I apologize. I sincerely do. I really didn't want to do another video on this, but I failed. Inspiration strikes where it wants, I guess. Low hanging fruit and easy pickings. It's time for MTV Reich news again. Melanin television news? People have actually said to me, are you mixed with something? I don't care, but are you? You don't even look black. <laughs> To be honest, you kinda don't. Good thing you're not living in Tanzania. They might take you for an albino. You have pretty big eyes for an Asian person. I really don't see myself casually commenting on people's ethnic appearances, but I guess some people might do that. And most Asians do have rather narrow eyes. Is that really your nose? What? I get it. White beauty standards are when whiteness is the default and it becomes the cultural ideal for beauty. Let's cut the bullshit and get to the core problem with MTV News when it comes to these topics. The reason why I chose to discuss this is my previous video on MTV News got the most views. Okay, bye. I'm the thoughtful contrarian. Feel free to rate, comment, no, seriously. Francesca Ramsey does a lot of videos like these and it usually comes down to the same thing majority rule. So as unfair or discouraging as this might seem to impressionable, fashion addicted, beauty product consuming GOCs, that's girls of color y'all. The majority of people in the US and the English speaking world in general are white. So most products, especially cosmetics, are going to target white consumers and therefore utilize white models. It's to be expected. Here's why I dislike MTV's spin on this topic and why I even go as far as to say it has the potential of inciting hatred based on race. They always make it about whites oppressing everybody else. They don't always explicitly say so, but only because they consider this to be a foregone conclusion. White beauty standards are when whiteness is the default and it becomes the cultural ideal for beauty. White, whiteness, just talk about majority imposed beauty standards, which is the actual point. It's usually a slim nose, having light skin, big eyes, long lashes. I didn't know that long lashes are distinctly white. I learned something. Good for you, MTV News. And hair that is the absolute opposite of mine. Oh, fuck right off. All right. I've got a slim nose and I'm light skinned. I even got long lashes, but I've got narrow, greedy looking eyes and dark, thick, curly hair. And people still think I'm beautiful. Then they go on to do a recap of previous videos about the usual stuff. Cosmetics and clothing that are marketed as skin colored and lighter than their own tones. It's repetitive and I'll skip it. It really starts to make you feel like you don't belong, like who you are is different and not acceptable. Rosa Park feels your pain. But now let's listen to how racist their communities are. There's even a phrase within black communities called good hair. And good hair is hair that is not kinky, not difficult to comb, and more closely mirrors the silky or soft hair of a white person. There is absolutely nothing wrong with my natural hair. And I remember when I was in college and I started my locks, my uncle told me that there was no way I was gonna get a job with my nappy hair. What's really messed up is I'm pretty sure he was trying to help me. When I would interview, I'd always pull my hair back and then I would show up for my first day like this. So then I'd be like, take a picture of me just like this so this could be on my ID. Even globally, white beauty standards are a huge thing. If you travel to China, there's also just like white people on the billboards for like Chinese clothing lines, which is very weird. Even in my own family, people would point out that my brother is like a little bit darker skin than me. Why does that matter? If it was like a white family and one of the kids was Tanner, no one would give a crap about that. I have a family photo where it looks like they put the worst Instagram whitening filter on us and just turned it whiter and weirdly blurry. The elves feel your pain too. She even turns black when she's evil. Now that was an impressive amount of anecdotal evidence. Let me make an actual argument for you because you clearly don't know how to do it yourselves. There is a classical connection between whiteness and beauty throughout Western history and culture. The angelic appearance, white color as a synonym for purity, the very imagery that the elves in Lord of the Rings are inspired by, is but one example. 
Helen of Troy is described as white-armed in Homer's Elias. White skin was a sign of nobility in the European Middle Ages too, as it indicated that you didn't have to be out working all day. These connotations of whiteness definitely exist within a lot of people and cultures. Alright, now if you don't believe me that white beauty standards are a thing, let's play a little game. This is not a game. Do a Google image search for a beautiful woman. Googling in English, are we? Let's see here. White woman, white woman behind a wall. We got blondes, we got brunettes. Takes a while, but you finally see a redhead. Because I'm a ginger. And that doesn't mean a white man. No. There really is still nobody. This is crazy. No, it's to be expected. Let's Google beautiful woman in Swahili, which is the only African language that I can think of from the top of my head. Surprising amount of white women, or Arab by the looks of it. It's the former queen of Saudi Arabia, for some reason. It's a weird Saudi supremacist PR stunt, I guess. But apart from her, all black. Except for Elizabeth Taylor. What a surprise, given the fact that I've Googled it in an African language. Now, Google image search, unprofessional hairstyle. Ooh, a significantly larger percentage of black ladies. I only checked the first row of images and all of them had the same two sources. They were either from a black fashion magazine or about one tweet on that exact criticism. But if the notion of curls looking unprofessional is widespread in corporate America, then that's unfair. You'll have the same problem in regard to beards in various workplaces, but I'll grant you that point. The problem is that all of these social messages you get about what is and who is beautiful influences who you think is beautiful. Representation matters, and it matters because we can raise an entire generation of people who don't carry this cultural baggage with them. Without representation, no taxation. Without representation, on a subconscious level, you don't think you matter as much. And so we have to see different representations of beauty and women of color and womanhood. You do, just not in the same quantity, which is the way it's going to be as long as whites are the majority in your country. Or until you've established a black supremacist dystopia. <laughs> just kidding. Or am I? I, I mean... Why would you want to establish a supremacist dystopia? So that we can know that who we are is just fine. That's sad. And scary. I'm the Thoughtful Contrarian. Feel free to rate, comment, share and subscribe.